right, so now we get to this over back grip, let's just look at a few basic ways to flatten our partner out. And your partner has a, a couple of choices here. Most of the time, what they're gonna be looking to do, once they get to this over back grip, is they'll start by trying to extend away from me, okay? And when they realize they can't do this, they have a couple of choices. Uh, most people will try to keep a knee shield in so that when I go to flatten them out, I come onto the knee shield and I can't flatten them out. All right, so the first and most basic is your partner lets the knee drift away like so. And now I just take my right knee and I just cover my partner's left hip. So I just physically walk them down and I beat the knee. All right, because right now she had the inside position with her knee relative to my hip. But if she forsakes that inside position, it's a pretty easy thing. Me just flatten her out. Okay. So first, the upper body's in good position, but she is lazy with the knee position. Whenever I see this, I just move. I chase my partner's far hip with my knee. I form a knee elbow connection. And now we have control over our partner's hips and we're chest to chest. Now we have to work to the upper body. Okay. The easiest way from here for me to work to the upper body is to use an inside, bi an inside bicep tie method. Where from here, she has elbows tight. I feel like I can't get inside. From this position, whenever I see this, I try to go in and I distract her at the cross face. If I can get to a collar tie or get to a cross face, I can just pull myself in. I can start working with the cross face and now I can fight to go to the underhook later. Everyone knows the cross face is coming in. So what everyone does is they go, I try to cross face and I can't get to the cross face. If I can pommel underneath and around and get to a collar tie or cross face and pull myself in, great. But most people will go up as I go up and follow me down and I can't get to the cross face. That's fine. I use the cross face as a distraction. Where as I go to move the cross face, I just take my right hand and just I move inside my partner's bicep like so. And now from here, once I'm inside the bicep, when she goes to use a cross shoulder post, or goes to use an underhook, for example, she can't do that. And now I just crash my partner's far shoulder. I physically take a backhand frame in my own head, like so. So when she goes to get that shoulder off the floor, I just crash the far shoulder and keep that far shoulder down pinned on the floor. And now from here, I play a game where I work my partner's elbow open. Now, it's a waiting game from here. When she goes to move away from me and shrimp, I just walk. I just walk with her. So when she goes to shrimp away and bring the knee in, it's difficult. So she can't bring the knee and she can't shrimp away. When she goes to sit up and get that far shoulder off the floor, she can't. I have all the weight on it. And now she's just waiting to get out pummeled here. From here I go in, I try to go up towards the cross face, I can't do it. From this position, I try to go down, I can't do it. From here, I grab the tricep and I look to start lifting. So she goes to keep that inside bicep tie, I lift and I clear. It's just enough, pommel inside. So I look at these three methods. One, if I get it, great. So she doesn't follow me. I get it, I move to a cross face. Two, she follows me. I go through and around, I get to a cross face. Three, she follows me with the elbow. I lift the elbow and I just shuck everything forwards. So now she has to keep a strong lock of the inside bicep tie. We give a quick kazushi and we take the hand inside. And we just play between these three. When she has to stop me from getting in, good. We come through and we lock a cross face in place. We control our partner's far shoulder with an inside bicep tie and we lock our hands over the far shoulder. So now when she goes to start moving up towards me and getting that shoulder off the floor, I have all my weight over the far shoulder and we effectively crash the far shoulder. Now, if she's naive, she'll take her wrist out and I can just go to underhook. If she's smart, she will keep that inside position with her left hand relative to my jaw. So now if I try to switch to underhook, I unlock my hand, she pushes and makes space for the need to come back inside. This is no good, okay? So it doesn't seem like much having this wrist inside, but it makes a big difference. If I take my hands out and I unlock them, she will always make space for that need to come back inside. It would always be drastic and that much movement, but it looks something like this. And then you lose position altogether. So from here, First thing we do is we open up the elbow. Now, when she goes to bring the knee inside, and I still have the, my hands locked, she can't bring the knee inside. I take my head and I first take my chin inside my partner's wrist, inside and underneath my partner's wrist, like so. I take my head inside and underneath my partner's wrist, like so. And now from here, we drive forward. 
The biggest danger from here is that when I'm going to lock my hands, my partner will exploit the space between my ear and my shoulder. So what happens is I go in, I go to punch my underhook in place. She exploits that space and she takes her hand back to the inside position. So I open up the elbow. I take my chin and my head to the inside position. And now from here, I lean forward and I connect my ear and my shoulder. When she gets to exploit that space now, it's impossible. Now from here, I just cut my partner's shoulder. I lift ever so slightly. That gives me space for my hand to come through. Now we have a top head and arm locked in tight. When she goes to bring her hand back to the inside, she can't. If I'm here, she just pummels her hand back inside right away, and now I'm back to square one. So I go in and I connect ear and shoulder together. When she goes to bring everything back inside, she no longer can fight back to the inside position. So from here, I get to this over back grip. Look to start playing a game where we chase the hips first. Okay, this is the easiest way to control a partner initially and then get to the upper body uh, chest to chest position, the inside position. So from here, if at any point my partner's knee drifts away from the inside position and she forsakes the inside knee position, I just flat my partner out by just driving my knee across to my partner's far hip like so. And now I go knee to elbow connection. When she goes to shrimp away, she can't do it. Now we're playing a game. We're trying to go to a cross face. If we can get to a collar tie or get to a cross face and then pull ourselves in, now we can just flatten our partner out and we can work from here because we have control of the head and shoulders. Most of the time, I can't get to my partner to a cross face like so. so. What happens is we take an inside bicep tie. We take a backhand frame. Your partner will be trying to viciously shrimp away from you from here and get the shoulder off the floor and face you. So I need to take a backhand frame and now from here, I just go in and I lean body weight to my partner's far shoulder. When she goes to start moving out and away from me and framing and doing all those things people like, it's not an easy thing to do from here. Now I play a game where I fight to the cross face. I go up first. If she doesn't follow me, I go collar tie and I pull myself into a cross face. If she follows me, I pommel around and underneath and we go to a cross face. If she follows me up and down and she's a sticky inside bicep tie, I lift and I drive everything forwards to create a disconnection and I pommel inside and from here we go in and we lock up. We lock up with a 10 finger grip and we play a game right from here. She goes to move around. It's not an easy thing to do at all. And now we open the elbow. We fight to the inside position like so. We lean forward and before we do anything, we get that ear shoulder connection. And she goes to move around from here, pommel the hand back inside. Not going to happen. And from here, we're in ready to go. Because that's chasing the hips first. Now understand, if at any point your partner keeps the knee in place, and I want to quickly flatten my partner out, you can just go in and V-grip your partner's ankle, and attempt to push that knee down. You won't always be able to do this, and we have options later for this. But we go in with a quick V-grip, and we just push our partner's ankle down. Conversely, we can go in, and we can push our partner's knee physically with the V grip on the knee, where the knees, if the knee's deep inside, I won't be able to access the knee, I have to go to the ankle. Okay, understand the ankle is not as strong because you run out of range of motion. So as I go to start walking and she pulls the knee back in, I can end up getting caught. So you sometimes I go to the ankle first, then I go to the knee. Now when she goes to bring that knee back inside, I have a much more range of motion I can get with that push in the knee, and now I can drive my knee across like so. And now from here, we can go in, play a game, or we go to that inside bicep tie, and we can work from here, okay? So at any point, I feel like my partner's knee is on the inside, and I wanna quickly push it out. You won't always be able to push it out, but if I want to, and it's not deep inside, I can go either to the ankle or the knee, if it's out here somewhere, or I can go to the ankle first, then the knee. And now from here, we go in, we push, and we drive. Now, if I wanna go, right to flattening my partner out. If at any point I see my partner's elbow drift behind her rib cage in this fashion, whenever I see this, instead of flattening my partner out and going to the hips first, like we did, where I flatten my partner out, I control the hips first, and then I move to the head and shoulders. If at any point I see my partner move to a situation where her elbow comes behind her rib cage, I just take an inside bicep tie right away. And now from here, if the knee comes out 
with my hip and I feel like, oh, I can flatten my partner out. I just move right to an inside bicep tie. I flatten my partner out. And then we immediately just swim across through a cross face. And now from here, we work in the same scenario. So I look at my partner's upper body and lower body positions from here. She should be in a situation where she has a knee inside my hip and a good elbow position like so. So now from here, I have to start working in other ways, which we're gonna look at in a second. But if at any point I see her knee drift outside my hip, I can flatten her out. If at any point I see her elbow drift too far back, I can either go one with my elbow right to the inside. Usually if I see my partner's hand is lower than the line of her elbow here. I take my elbow right inside and now as she goes to start working, I flatten her out. If I see the elbow is higher than the height of the hand and somewhere up here, now it might be hard for you to swim the elbow inside. You might end up off balance from here. So whenever I see this, we just take a hand inside and we go in here like so. And now we just go into that same backhand frame. She goes to work, we flatten the shoulder, we crash that far shoulder and we go to work. Okay, so when we move to this over back grip, we're looking for one of two things initially. We wanna put our partner's, our partner's back flat on the floor. Many times, as she goes to move away from me, if she's naive, she goes to extend away, she just almost flattens herself out. Okay, this will happen, even with, world with black belt world champions, this will happen a lot, ADCC champions, because they just are terrible when you close the distance. But assuming that my partner's good, she's looking to keep elbow position good, knee position good. If at any point I see the knee drift outside my hip, there's no reason probably can't put that back flat on the floor and let the fight from here. If at any reason, any time we see that elbow drift behind the rib cage, there's no reason why we can't flatten her out. If the hand, if you draw a line that goes straight out from the elbow, if the hand is below that line, we take the elbow right inside with an elbow slice. We slice to an inside bicep tie. If the elbow is above the hand, we can't get the elbow inside. We swim underneath and we move to an inside bicep tie. And now when she goes to start moving from here, we go in, we lock those hands, we open everything up, we fight to the inside position, and now we're ready to go in and start our passing game from top half guard with the top head and arm. Okay, so just a very basic way of flattening my partner out once we get to the over back grip. If she goes to extend, then she just flattens out, just flatten your partner out. But the two things we're looking at is knee position, elbow position. If the elbow position is spot on and you can't get right to the upper body inside position, chase the hips first. Flatten the hips out and then climb your way up to the upper body. If you, if you feel like your partner has poor elbow position and the elbow comes back too far, then it's a pretty easy thing to just go right to the upper body, skip moving to the hips, and then right away, as soon as you flatten them out, you're in a perfect position to control the head and the shoulders. And you can go to a top head and arm and start passing from there.